Good? Yep. Welcome to 230 Dudes. I'm Antonio Harrison. And I'm Charles Schilling. And tonight it's actually a little bit more like 230 University. I like that. <laughs> I, I like that. that. 230 <laughs> University. Let's roll with it. Uh, we are have a... Fuck. Um, well, we have a great episode for you tonight on the Stanford Prison Experiment. If you've never heard of it, experiment from the 70s, unbelievable in terms of observing human behavior when it comes to power. Yes, absolutely. I think that that's the real takeaway. And in a lot of uh, cases, it ends up being the example of what not to do yes. in a psychological experiment. So today I figured I would share something I learned in Psych 101 undergrad okay. Charles yeah called the prisoner's dilemma the prison and I'm going into this as a total novice he's teaching me right now I don't know anything here okay so the prisoner's dilemma is a game analyzed in game theory and what it analyzes is cooperative behavior okay right me and you working together okay now it was first discovered or introduced by Merrill Ford and Melvin Drescher at Rand in 1950 Albert Tucker kind of put the final stamp on it in 92. Okay. So here's how it works. You and I get arrested, right? We get taken into custody, fingerprinted, booked. They put us into solitary confinement, separate. Okay. Prosecution has nothing on us for this crime. Mm -hmm. But they want to try to get us for a lesser charge. Right? Just to give us a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Now, full disclaimer here. This is when justice system is working fine. Okay. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so we got to put that out there. Right. This is... No, no bad cops. No bad cops. Yes. No yeah. bad cops, no bad prosecutors, bad right. judges, none of that. Right? Yeah. Uh, so, they put, separate us, have no evidence on the charge they're trying to get us for, so mm -hmm. they say, you know what? We're going to get them for this lesser charge. They happen to have maybe some contraband on them or something sure. like that. So they present to us the opportunity to rat each other out. For a lesser charge? Right. Okay. Now, if we both betray each other, we get two years each. If I betray you and you stay silent, I walk free and you get three years. But if we both say nothing, we'll probably get one year each. Because they have nothing. Right. Okay. So the best option for us as a collaborative, cooperative group is to remain silent. Mm -hmm. But nobody does that. Yeah. Nobody, when it comes to self-preservation, decides to cooperate. Because they don't trust the person in the other room. Well, not just that, but they don't want to be the one to not make the decision. And they also... It's not a matter of I want to cooperate. It's a matter of I got to save myself. Mm -hmm. Forget trusting Charles. I'm not trying to rot in jail. Yeah. But also, like Charles said, he could be riding on me. Right. And case after case after case in studies and trials, people do not cooperate. Someone rats on the other person. And someone ends up always getting... A harsher sentence because of it as opposed to if we had both remained silent and gotten the least amount of time possible for both of us mm -hmm. as a collective group or we both walk wow okay yeah all right now this just doesn't work now this isn't just for prison this can be applied to any situation where you're talking cooperative behavior go on anything so think of anything you can think of where we have to work together. Uh, this podcast. Okay. This here. Uh huh. Right? Um, I can either cooperate with you and we run this out together, 230 dudes, me and you against the world, or I can let Sirius XM pull me away. Just you. Just me. Nah. Which Fuck one am that. I do? Fuck that shit. <laughs> I wouldn't leave. I wouldn't leave. I wouldn't leave. I wouldn't leave. But this can be applied to anything. Mm -hmm. But specifically for the game of the prisoner's dilemma, mm -hmm. the best option you have is to not say a damn thing. And that even goes 
with today's injustice that you see in the uh, world of law. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just the arrests and things that happen. Don't say anything. Yeah. Because guess what? If you've been arrested and you're, if you've been arrested, you've been charged. Right. Right. But if you're just being interrogated, mm -hmm. you're not charged. That's true. And you have the freedom to leave. And I know little about this subject, but I do know that A, yes, you have the freedom to leave. B, police are legally allowed to lie in order to get you to confess. They can say, in me in my own solitary room, Antonio already said everything. He told us it was you. Just sign this piece of paper that says that. But if it was the truth, there would be no conversation with Charles about that. Right, because they've already got you. They've got me already, yeah. so they'd walk in and cuff him up and take him off to prison. Exactly. Exactly. That's right. So next time you find yourself in an opportunity to cooperate, mm -hmm. do it. Don't be so selfish and greedy. Yeah. Just stand by your friend or your partner in crime. Yeah. And understand that I'm going to be a lot more loyal if we both do one year as opposed to if I get five and he walks free. Yeah. Because in that case, uh, once I get out. Yeah, I'm going to have a really good five years and then I'm going to have to go into hiding for the rest of my much, life. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> So uh, that's kind of a segue into tonight's episode again about the Stanford Prison Experiment. Yes, that's uh, going to be posting tonight uh, at 8 p.m. on Stitcher, Spreaker, iTunes, and at 230dudes.com. Please check it out. It's going to be a great episode. It really is a good one. Thanks for watching.